after studying this module, you will be able to know how to derive the different cost curves graphically, learn the interrelationship between the cost concepts, identify the average, marginal, and total cost concepts, understand the importance of the cost concepts. Ordinarily, cost refers to the money expenses incurred by a firm in the production process. But in economics, cost is used in a broader sense. Here, cost include imputed value of the entrepreneur's own resources and services as well as the salary of the owner-manager. There are various concepts of cost that a firm considers relevant under various circumstances. To make a better business decision, it is essential to know the fundamental differences and uses of the main concepts of cost. Let us start this module by discussing some key terminologies. Accounting and economic cost. Money cost are the total money expenses incurred by a firm in producing a commodity. They include wages and salaries of labor, cost of raw materials, expenditures on machines and equipment, depreciation and obsolescence charges on machines, buildings and other capital goods and all types of taxes. There are the accounting cost which an entrepreneur takes into consideration in making the payments to the various factors of production. These money cost are also known as explicit cost that an accountant records in the firm's books. But there are other types of economic cost called the implicit cost. Implicit cost are the imputed value of the entrepreneur's own resources and services. Economic cost include accounting cost plus implicit cost that is both the explicit and implicit cost. Production cost. The total cost of production of a firm are divided into total variable cost and total fixed cost. The total variable cost are those expenses of production which changes with the change in the firm's output. Larger the output requires larger inputs of labor, raw materials, power, fuel, etc., which increase the expenses of production. When output is reduced, variable cost also diminish. They cease when production stops altogether. Marshall called these variable cost as the prime cost of production. The total fixed cost called supplementary cost by Marshall are those expenses of production which do not change with the change in output. They are rent and interest payments, depreciation charges, wages and salaries of the permanent staff, etc. Fixed cost have to be incurred by the firm even if it stops production temporarily. Actual cost and opportunity cost. Actual cost refers to the cost which a firm incurs for acquiring inputs or producing a good and service such as the cost of raw materials, wages, rent, interest, etc. The total money expenses recorded in the books of accounts are the actual cost.
opportunity cost is the cost of sacrifice of the best alternative for goan in the production of a good or service since resources are scarce in nature they cannot be used to produce all things simultaneously therefore if they are used to produce one thing they have to be withdrawn from the other uses thus the cost of one is the alternative for goan direct cost are the cost that have direct relationship with a unit of operation that is they can be easily and directly identified or attributed to a particular product operation or plant direct cost directly enters into the cost of production but retain their separate identity on the other hand indirect cost are those cost whose source cannot be easily and definitely traced to a plant a product a process or a department such as electricity stationery and other office expenses depreciation on building decoration expenses etc all the direct cost are variable because they are linked to a particular product or a department therefore they vary with the changes in them on the contrary indirect cost may or may not be variable private and social cost private cost are the cost incurred by a firm in producing a commodity or service these include both explicit and implicit cost however the production activities of a firm may lead to economic benefit or harm for others for example production of commodities like steel rubber and chemicals pollutes the environment which leads to social cost on the other hand production of such services as education sanitation services park facilities etc leads to social benefits take for instance education which not only provides higher incomes and other satisfactions to the recipient but also more enlightened citizens to the society if we add together the private cost of production and economic damage upon others such as environmental pollution etc we arrive at social cost incremental cost and sunk cost incremental cost denote the total additional cost associated with the marginal batch of the output these cost are the additions to the cost resulting from a change in the nature and level of business activity for example change in product line or output level adding or replacing a machine changes in distribution channel etc in the long run firms expand their production employ more men materials machinery and equipment all these expenses are incremental cost sunk cost sunk cost are the cost that are not affected or altered by a change in the level or nature of the business activity it cannot be altered increased or decreased by varying the level of activity or the rate of output all past or the actual cost are regarded as sunk cost explicit cost and implicit cost explicit cost are those payments that must be made to the factors hired from outside the control of the firm they are the monetary payments made by the entrepreneur for purchasing or hiring 
the services of various productive factors which do not belong to him. Such payment as rent, wages, interest salaries, payment for raw materials, fuel, power, insurance premium, etc. are the example of explicit cost. Implicit cost refers to the payment made to the self-owned resources used in production. They are the earnings of the owner's resources employed in their best alternative uses. For example, a businessman utilizes his service in his own business leaving his job as a manager in a company. Thus, he forgoes his salary as a manager. This loss of salary becomes an implicit cost of his own business. Implicit costs are also known as imputed cost, shutdown cost and abandonment cost. Shutdown cost are the cost that are incurred in the case of a closure of plant operations. If the operations are continued, these costs can be saved. These costs include all types of fixed cost, the cost of sheltering plant and equipment, layoff expenses, employment and training of workers when the operation is restarted. On the other hand, abandonment cost are the cost which are incurred because of retiring altogether a plant from use. These costs are related to the problem of disposal of assets. For example, the costs are related to the discontinuance of tram services in Delhi. These concepts of cost are very important for the management when they have to make decisions regarding the continuance of existing plant, suspension of its operation or its closure. Incremental cost and marginal cost. There is a close relation between marginal cost and incremental cost, but they have differences also. In reality, Incremental cost is used in a broad sense in relation to the marginal cost. Marginal cost is the cost of producing an additional unit of output while the incremental cost is defined as the change in the cost resulting from a change in the business activities. In other words, incremental cost is the total additional cost related to the marginal quantity of output. The concept of incremental cost is very important in the business world because in practice it is not possible to use every unit of input separately. Let us now move on to discuss the derivation of the short run average and marginal cost curves from the total cost curves. Whether it is production or cost, there are three categories of concepts, total, average and marginal. In the short run, there are three types of total cost curves, total fixed cost curve, total variable cost curve and total cost curves, whereas in the long run, there are no fixed cost and only variable cost are there, hence there are only total cost associated with it. The average and the marginal cost curves can be geometrically derived from a total cost curve. The table shows the different costs incurred on different levels of output. In short run, TFC is constant so it remains 240 for all levels of output. TVC is total cost minus total fixed cost. For example, at 2 units of output, TVC is 160, which is 400 minus 240. AFC is TFC divided by output. At 4 units of output, AFC is 240 by 3, that is 80. Similarly, 
AVC is TVC divided by output. So at four units of output, TVC is 212 by four, which is equal to 53. In the same way, ATC equals TC divided by output. MC is defined by the increase in TC or TVC consequent upon a small increase in output. For example, the total cost of producing two units of output is 400 and the total cost of producing three units of output is 420. Therefore, marginal cost of the third unit is 20. Let us now derive AFC curve from TFC curve. The total fixed cost curve is parallel to the X axis since the costs remain the same irrespective of the level of output. In the table, we find TFC is 240 at all levels of output. Now the average fixed cost equals TFC divided by output. Geometrically, at the output level of one unit, AFC is equal to the slope of ray OA, which is equal to 240. By using a dotted line, we mark this value by A in the graph below. At output levels of two units, AFC is equal to slope of ray OB and refers to point B, which is equal to 240 by 2, that is 120. Similarly, we can plot for other levels of output and get the corresponding points and by joining all these points, we get AFC curve. The AFC curve is a rectangular hyperbola. It is asymptotic to the axis, which means that as the AFC curve moves further away from the origin along the axis, it gets closer to the axis but never touches it. Now let us derive AVC curve from TVC curve with the help of a diagram. The average variable cost is equal to the TVC divided by output. At the output level of one unit, AVC is equal to the slope of ray OA, which is equal to 120. We can mark this point on the diagram below and name it A. Similarly, we can plot other points B, C and D and by joining all these points, we can get the AVC curve. The AVC curve is downward sloping till point C and then slopes upward. The slope of the ray OC from the origin to the TVC curve is the lowest at point C on the TVC curve, which implies that AVC at the output level of four units is the lowest at C. Let us now study the derivation of ATC curve from TC curve with the help of diagram. In the first panel, we have taken total cost curve and in the lower panel, we will derive ATC curve. The ATC curve at different level of output is indicated by the slope of the ray from the origin to the TC curve. Thus, OA, OB, OC and OD are rays whose slope indicates the ATC at the corresponding level of output. By tracing these points on the lower panel, we get points A, B, C, D. Now join these points to get the AVC curve. The slope of a ray from the origin falls up to point C on TC curve and rises afterwards. The ray from the origin is tangent to the TC curve at point C. Thus, ATC curve falls up to point C and then rises, giving it a U shape. Marginal cost is sometimes known as incremental cost as it is the increase in TC consequent upon a small increase in output. Delta TC is the change in total cost due to a small change in output. As fixed cost remains unchanged in the short run, therefore, Marginal cost is also the increase in total variable cost due to a small increase in output. Delta TVC is the change in total variable cost due to a small change in output. Delta Q is the small change in output. Now we will study how to derive MC curve from TC and TVC curve. From the figure, we find that the slopes of the TVC curve and the TC curve are the same at every level of output. Point A and A1 are the points of inflection respectively on TC and TVC. Now, as MC is the change in TC or TVC, we mark the point A, B and C in the lower panel. Now, by joining these points, we get MC curve. Now, what we can see is that the MC falls up to 2.5 units of output, which equals point A on the MC curve and then rises. The MC is given by the slope of the TVC curve at point B which is represented by B on the MC curve. At five units of output, MC is equal to the slope of the TC curve at point C. Thus, point B refers to the lowest point at AVC and point C refers to the... Let us now understand how LAC curve is derived from SAC curves. The long run average cost curve or the LAC curve is the locus of points denoting the least cost of producing different levels of output in the long run. 
In the figure, we have measured average cost along the y-axis and output along the x-axis. If the firm decides to produce OQ1 level of output, then it will choose the plant size SHC2 and not SAC1. If the demand for the firm's output increases to OQ3, then the average cost starts increasing along the plant SAC2 and the firm decides to set up a larger plant size SAC3 to minimize its average costs of production in the long run. The notable point in the figure is that the long run average curve does not touch the short run average cost curves on their minimum points. In the phase of increasing returns to scale and decreasing cost, the LAC curve touches the SAC curves to the left of the minimum points of the SAC curves and in the phase of diminishing returns, it touches the SAC curves to their right. The LAC is therefore not the locus of lowest points of SAC curves. It is only at OQ4 level of output under constant returns to scale LAC is touching the minimum point of SAC4. The LAC curve is also known as the envelope curve as it envelops the short run cost curves. Let us now understand the relationship between LAC and LRMC. LRMC lies below the LAC when LAC is falling and above it when LAC is rising. Thus, LAC and LRMC intersect when LAC is the minimum. In the long run, the plant size can be changed while in the short run, the existing plant will continue to be used for producing larger output. Since in the long run, all factors are variable, therefore, all cost of production are variable. There is no need to distinguish between fixed and variable cost. In other words, we can sum up the relationship between LAC and LRMC as follows. Long run marginal cost is the change in the total cost resulting from producing an extra unit of output in the long run. When LAC is downward sloping, LMC must lie below LAC. When LAC is horizontal, LMC and LAC are equal. Let us now recapitulate what we have learned in this module. In the short run, there are three types of total cost curves, total fixed cost curve, total variable cost curve and total cost curve. Whereas in the long run, there is no fixed cost, only variable and total cost. The average and marginal cost curves can be geometrically derived from a total cost curve. The average fixed cost equals TFC divided by output and the AFC curve is a rectangular hyperbola. The average variable cost is equal to the TVC divided by output. The ATC at different level of output is indicated by the slope of the ray from the origin to the TC curve. Marginal cost is the increase in TC consequent upon a small increase in output.